G'day guys and gal, the resurrection of Gilliman was the biggest event in Warhammer 40k lore since the Horus Heresy. It took the galaxy by complete surprise, all prophecies and predictions were instantly cancelled, with even the most twisted future seas of the warp being blindsided. The fact that it was coupled with the fall of Cadia as well as the creation of the Great Rift added that extra spice. After all, if the galaxy hadn't just shit the bed, then the arrival of G-Men and his Primaris would have pretty much spelt GG well played in favour of the Imperium. Needless to say, there was a lot of different reactions. Most of them were surprised. I've actually made a video already covering what the galaxy's reaction was, but I didn't include the Emperor in that video, who had a very strong and very interesting reaction, so I thought I would give him his own video. After all, it is the Emperor. Before we get started, there's more to Manscaped than just shaving your dick without dicing it up like sashimi. Although that is pretty great. But did you know that Manscaped as a brand covers a wide spectrum of male hygiene and grooming products? A badass single bladed razor that gives you a clean rash free finish. Ball deodorant that eliminates stanky dick. Body soap and hair wash that smells unreal. Like I use it so much I can't even show you what it looks like because I just ran out. Roll on deodorant that leaves you feeling and smelling fresh all day. The only thing they need now is manscaped mouthwash and toothpaste and I'm done, that's, that's everything. But the hero of today's partnership is the new breathable anti-chafe smooth boxes. They feel great and look great, having a variety of designs that show you mean business. They are perfect for everyday use. And you can get a discount on them if you get them in a three pack bundle. Then to get an even bigger discount on the bundle as well as every single Manscaped product, then use my link in code MAJORKILL for 20% off and free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over how the Emperor reacted to Gilliman's resurrection and why the reaction was such a big deal deal. Let's get into it. Before I get into the juicy flesh meat that is the love handles of this video, you're probably thinking, how the fuck does the Emperor react to something? Isn't he just a stale piece of beef jerky by this point? And you'd have a fair argument. The Emperor hasn't been in the chattiest mood since he was low-key murdered and put on a life support system that doubles as a torture chair. But we all know the Emperor's might comes from his soul and not his decrepit body. After 10,000 years of daily psycho sacrifice and becoming one with the Astronomicon, his soul is burning brighter than ever and is the main thing keeping the Imperium together. As such, yes, he does have a degree of consciousness and can react to shit. However, that doesn't mean he can do it easily. When his body was shattered, so was his soul and consciousness. It's now heavily fragmented, meaning he struggles with coherent thought. He is no longer human and presents as such, acting more on omnipresent instinct rather than a structured plan. For example, when he created the living saints to help counter greater demons, this probably wasn't a grand plan or human thought. It was his godlike instinct to help mankind. I'm not even sure he was aware he created the living saints when he did. Likewise, he has occasionally blessed or even even Loki possess various humans at times to guide them towards achieving a goal, generally that goal being thought in chaos. However, each of these actions requires a shitload of willpower and effort from the Emperor. He really struggles to pull himself together, or at least he did until Gilliman returned. Now since the Great Rift opened at a similar time to G-Man's revival, the reaction he had took a blend of both events. Firstly, he was like, holy fucking shit, the galaxy just shat the pants, dude, with the psychic backlash of the Great Rift opening actually knocking him out for a bit, turning off the Astronomicon and dooming countless people. He was able to turn it back on after about a month, but since time across the galaxy gets a little funky, for some people this took a century or more. However, when Gilliman busted three nuts to get to Terra to speak with his father, the Emperor was pleased. Not to see a son, no. The Emperor never really considered the Primarch sons, only forming that bond with them as a form of manipulation. To be honest, he kind of resented them and their need for glory and recognition. So when the Emperor saw G-Man, he reacted as if he had just found a long lost favorite tool. Gilliman was a bit offended because, you know, a bit emotionally vulnerable after waking up to find the Imperium a toxic superstitious mess and having just fought off Magnus as well as a massive Cornite invasion. Gilliman would go on to describe their conversation like talking with a star instead of a human. The gist of it was that the Emperor was shitty and dying, but hadn't yet truly given up, instructing Gilliman to take command and do his best to save mankind. We don't get to see the full conversation in the lore, however an absolute fucking legend by the name of Balam95, I mean yeah probably not his real name, made a fan fiction of the conversation which fits in extremely well without sucking off his own dick like so many fan fiction writers end up doing. 
Most people that have read it are actually surprised to learn that it's a fan fiction if they didn't read the small print. In saying that, the fan fiction has kind of become no longer relevant, as recent lore in the form of God Blight shows us some of the convo. In that, it has Gilliman asking for guidance, while the Emperor has a fucking aneurysm and just keeps saying contradictory things. He eventually is able to pull himself together to tell Gilliman that he is mankind's last hope in his own weird way, which is, you know, no pressure, G-Man. Funnily enough, the fan fiction and canon combo are very similar. The only big difference is that in canon, the Emperor is an absolute mess and struggles to articulate his message, whereas the fan fiction has the Emperor as fully coherent but cynical. Both are good, and I recommend checking them both out. So that was the Emperor's initial reaction to Gilliman's resurrection. He was pleased, but cynical and fragmented. Gilliman was disappointed by the encounter and shocked by how cold and damaged the creature he called Father actually was. The Emperor did give Gilliman his flaming sword as a badge of office, and also because it's fucking awesome, so there's that at least. But wait, there's more. G-Man then goes off on his Indomitus Crusade, saves the galaxy, claps some cheeks, then goes to Ultramar to fight Mortarion. Now G-Man should have learnt from the last time he fought a demon Primarch that he isn't the greatest duelist on the best of days. Hence Morty gains the upper hand and injects Gilliman with the God Blight, a virus that can kill even a Primarch. And it works! Gilliman rapidly deteriorates, shits himself, and dies. But he survives! Unlike the last time Gilliman died, the Emperor directly intervenes and saves Gilliman, instantly curing him of the God Blight, possessing his body, smacking Morty for being a naughty boy, before then setting Nurgle on fire for a laugh. Why the fuck didn't he pull this shit before, I hear you ask? Well, here's the ironic thing about the opening of the Great Rift. Sure, it flooded the galaxy with warp energy, meaning demons were stronger and more present, and psychers increased in power and instability. But guess who's the strongest psyker of them all? That's right, the God Emperor of man fucking kind. The warp energy that flooded into his cosmic bones has allowed him to reunite his consciousness with significantly more ease. It's still difficult for him, but the fact that he can instantly cure the most horrific disease in the galaxy and then bench Nurgle is quite the step up from just sitting there and silently screaming all the time. The Emperor intervening like this, even to go as far as to call Gilliman his son again during the intervention, represents a dramatic shift in his attitude from when he first saw the Lord of Ultramar. When they first met, the Emperor was like, yeah sure, do whatever you want, who the fuck cares, we're screwed anyways. But now it's like, holy shit, this blonde boy is actually doing it. The motivation of seeing Gilliman work so hard to save the Imperium, combined with the extra warp juice he now has, gave him the will to fight. Like, as he is possessing Gilliman, he speaks of things that were previously seem totally impossible. Stuff like curing demon Primarchs of their corruption and restoring them to their former selves. He even tells Nurgle that he's gonna straight up murder his ass, so yeah, the Emperor isn't fucking around this time. A few people aren't super keen on the fact that the Emperor can now just seemingly save the day at the last minute, giving Gilliman a ton of plot armor. But here's why what happened is actually fine. Firstly, Chaos pulls shit like this all the time, reviving dead champions, teleporting champions to safety at the last second. Fuck, I mean even the demons will always regenerate when the plot demands it. Secondly, I don't think this will be a regular thing. The Emperor likely had to clench real hard to pull this off, and the duel happened during a moment in intense warp spaghetti. For example, Nurgle literally manifested to watch the Emperor talk shit, so if there was ever a time when the situation was suitable for the Big E to make a clutch save, then it was now. If it does become a plot device where G-Men can now just Leroy Jenkins at Demon Primarchs no worries, then yeah, that would be retarded. But Warhammer writing has been pretty solid lately, so I doubt that will be the case. Gilliman isn't the only one who the Emperor has been helping. The Emissaries Imperiatus Custodes, who usually just sit around and jerk off all day, were told by the Emperor to help Gilliman and act as his heralds who would drop off the Primarch to the various minor chapters. Previously, it would take them years of meditation and discussion to determine if the Emperor just did a fart or a burp, but since the Great Rift opened, he was able to communicate with them much more clearly and concisely. Knowing all this, it can genuinely be argued that the Emperor is back. I do like how the writers have changed the setting from the inevitable defeat of the Imperium to the wild, wild west, where either mankind could now achieve a total victory or the Imperium could fall tomorrow. It makes it a lot more spicy. Well, at least until the rest of the Nids show up and devour everyone. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only one dollar per month give you access to a boatload of fun little drawn images that you should not show your kids ever. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more reactful content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.